aid or trade, aid and growth? What's your view? I think one of the main critiques against donor aid is the fact that it cannot succeed in an environment that's rife uh, with corruption, mm -hmm. which unfortunately is the case in a lot of African countries. So you generally find that the money never really reaches the people who need it the most. Um, on the upside, we have seen quite a few positive stories coming out of Africa where economies have been reforming and mm -hmm. governments have been implementing better policies. So that should be a positive economic development. There's obviously two kinds of aids, or there could be three, but two that I know of. And it's aid that's directed towards development, the kind of money you see going to healthcare, to education. And then there's a lot of aid that goes towards fiscal and budgetary support and we've seen a lot of that post recession what sort of role are donors playing in Africa well I think in light of the current global um, economic climate you're definitely going to see donor aid taking a slight knock going forward last year donor aid to the to the continent stood at about 129 billion dollars mm -hmm. which is an all-time high so that number's will probably decline slightly going forward. I think one of the biggest areas that's going to take a knock is in terms of budget support. Donors are now going to be a lot more fussy in terms of where exactly that money is allocated. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find countries that have big and expensive cabinets or large public sector servant bills going to be the hardest hit. But the impact will vary from country to country as well. This disconnect, this idea that aid is flowing in Africa but the poor are getting poorer, how do you explain that? Well, I think as I mentioned initially, corruption, corruption. Is, is, is the biggest thing. Um, the, the idea is right, the purpose, it, it's all in, in, with good intent, but it never really reaches the people who need it the most. And if it's not reaching those people, you cannot expect your, your country to grow yeah. over the long term. All right, so obviously now post-credit crisis, a lot of developed countries are reviewing their aid positions because a lot of money is needed domestically. We're seeing those austerity measures uh, taking place in Europe. So we're not going to see as many aid flows into the continent. How is that going to change the dynamic? Well, I think as you correctly put it, you will never find developed nations implementing austerity measures back at home and still finding the need to support an African country's budget going forward. So that's obviously going to take a knock. I think now donors are going to focus, um, they're going to be a lot, there's going to be a much stricter criteria. They're going to focus on things like good governance, levels of corruption and mismanagement, fiscal discipline, and quite importantly, respect of human rights in countries. Um, I think as well, IMF presence in countries is, is a big deal, and IMF comfort with countries also gives donors, donors comfort as well. I think important to note as well is geopolitical factors mm -hmm. and strategic factors also play a very important role in terms of where developed nations would place their country within Africa. That's the developed nations, those who support African economies through AIDS. Let's talk about the responsibilities of African governments, especially those that are dependent on aid. You've spoken about the corruption issue, but where it's not a situation of mismanagement, how is it that African governments are using and benefiting from aid? Well, I think one of the ways that they could definitely use it to their benefit in terms is in terms of diversifying their economies. A lot of African countries are focused purely on one on one way in which to generate revenue into their country. But if you look at a country like Botswana or Namibia, not very reliant on donor aid, and they probably won't need it going forward because they're strong economies, strong growth levels, um, big mining sectors, and they probably wouldn't need it going forward. So that's what your more volatile countries need to look towards mm. uh, and to use that donor aid for. Let's talk about how others have performed. We obviously know of the big debacle between Malawi the UK government and other donors within their stream. 40% of their budget relies on donor support. And now that there's been this um, tension and this impasse, that money's not coming through. Questions about whether Malawi can survive economically going forward. Zimbabwe has been a pariah for the longest time. The donor is not prepared to engage even a government of national unity. But interestingly, the economy is growing now, not thriving, but certainly looking a, better, a lot better than it did. When you look at the amalgam of countries in the region that rely on donor support, their relations with donors, how would you rate them? Well, I think you can obviously group them differently. As I mentioned, Botswana and Namibia are not very reliant, can manage by themselves. Then you do get your probably worst case scenarios, which is Swaziland, Malawi, Zimbabwe. Now, in terms of Malawi, I think unless there is um, a significant political uh, regime change or change in mindset and if there's a change towards human rights. Until you see that, you're definitely going to see donor aid on a negative trend in that country. Almost the same situation in, in Swaziland. 
They definitely need an economic reform, financial reform, and political reform. The only things that will continue to receive aid is the humanitarian side. Donors are not going to be able to pull out of that, especially due to the fact that they already have agreements until at least 2015. Mm. Zimbabwe is different in the sense that if there are free and fair elections, um, which would not happen probably until at least quarter three next year, mm. if that does happen, they have free and fair elections, and if it is a proper representation of the people in the country, you'll definitely see a significant uptick in donor aid in that country.